He's been covered by Elvis Costello and Rod Stewart, as well as Canadians like Leslie Feist. John McDermott, another Canadian, released an entire album of this gentleman's songs. He's just released his 17th album earlier this year called Hermitage, now living in Stratford, St. Catharines native. Ron Sexsmith joins us, and uh, Ron, it's so great to connect with you. It's been many years. Uh, we grew up, I, just, uh, I, I guess we should tell people we grew up in the same neighborhood, know a lot of the same people, but we're not here to talk about that. I want to mm -hmm. talk about December 5th, you're appearing at the First Ontario Performing Arts Centre. It must be great to be able to perform again here in your hometown. Yeah, um, it kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, I wasn't, you know, my whole tour got wiped out this year like every, everybody else, you know. And then, um, but then, yeah, this just gig popped up uh, with the symphony. And um, yeah, so I, I'm still, you know, I, I guess I won't really believe it until I'm actually playing it because, you know, you, they keep changing the restrictions and all this stuff. But I, I'm really looking forward to it. And thankfully, you know, I'd done a show with the Toronto Symphony a few years earlier. So they had some charts as well. You know, because that was the other concern, you know, do, they were asking if I had any charts for the orchestra, you know. But anyway, I'm looking forward to it and just to make myself useful again. When you play a show like this, what kind of material are you doing? I mean, obviously, you'd like to promote your new album. But... Well, I mean, I'm, I'm mainly going to do the ones that the, the Toronto Symphony charted, you know, which were sort of well-known songs of mine. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember, you know, there's about seven or eight of them that we're doing. And then I'm going to do a few by myself. In, you know, which will probably be a few from the new record. And I might do, I, you know, I have this one Christmas song, maybe, maybe this Christmas that I might play by myself because there wasn't really enough time for them to have charts for my new, you know, my new material or anything like that. So it's going to be half and half, half a solo show and half, or probably the majority, majority will be the, with, this, with the orchestra. You must really be looking forward to it. How long has it been since you played a show? Well, since uh, the last, I did three shows last April, <laughs> that was sort of it. And, uh, you know, um, and that's not that unusual because I was between records and this and that. But, you know, all last year I spent doing, putting the finishing touches on my record for it to come out this year. And of course, nobody saw COVID coming. And so um, my, my album was released right in the middle of the, you know, or, or in the early days of the pandemic. And um, I was just thankful that it was sort of an up-tempo, you know, an up-tempo, optimistic album, because I think if it was more of a sad record, I might not have wanted it out at, the, at that time. But, uh, but you know, so the whole tour got wiped out, and I've just been, you know, we're all wondering when, when are we going to be able to get back to doing what we were doing before. And so it's so, it's so nice to have a show and, you know, have a, another one in December as well, in, a, in another town that uh, just sort of popped up unexpectedly. It is a great album, and you say it, it's positive, and it, and it is. I, I, I looked for some of the recent reviews of it. Exclaim Magazine called it playful. Uh, the New Yorker compares your music on this album to Paul McCartney's earlier solo work. An American mm -hmm. songwriter called it stellar. Are you used to getting the word playful attached to your music? Um, perhaps more in recent years, you know. I think since my Retriever album, which was, I don't know, like 2004, I guess it's not that recent. I think the albums have gotten more optimistic. And I mean, I think I got sort of pegged early on as being a melancholy songwriter, which I didn't really feel was accurate. Um, but no, I mean, I, I, you never know when you put out a record if it's going to be the one everybody hates, you know? So I was just happy that people liked it. I was, I know I, I liked it. I mean, it was my drummer's idea for me to play all the instruments. Uh, and it because he, he thought, you know, he liked those early McCartney records and he thought it'd be kind of cool to have that approach. Uh, obviously, McCartney, I mean, I, he could play drums. I, that was the only instrument that I, I didn't feel comfortable playing. But uh, so it, it just feels like a kid in a candy store sort of record. And we recorded it here at my house, which is sort of amazing to me. I didn't think you could do that. Um, so, yeah, it's just everything about the record felt like it was sort of meant to be. And so I'm just glad people like it. Can you talk about the album cover? It's quite colorful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that was a fun uh, photo shoot because um, I got the idea because in Toronto, we never had a yard, you know, so all of a sudden we have this yard in Stratford and I'm cutting the grass. My wife bought me a push mower, um, like uh, without a motor, you know, it was an old fashioned yes. push mower and which I love. I, I, it's like a meditation kind of thing, you know, but I was cutting the grass one day and these um, local neighbors walked by and they happened to say that 
some people were calling our house the celebrity house, you know, which was sort of funny <laughs> because, because we just moved in or whatever. And I was thinking, you know, there's way, I mean, Peter Mandrich lives here in this town and lots of, you know, actors call him Fiora and that. Um, but anyway, once they, once they said celebrity house, I sort of got this idea in my head, like, like what if, you know, like this, Elton John lived there or something, you know, and he was out. I just I started imagining this sort of eccentric, cliche rock star. Not that Elton's cliche, but you know that sort of feather boa type '70s thing. And so I had the image of the album cover in my head almost immediately. And it was just a matter of whether I could pull it off. It was one of those things where if I looked at the photo and I thought it was stupid, I might have said, "Okay, let's just forget about it, and I'll go stand by that wall or something." But, <laughs> but thankfully, I think it turned out and. Uh, it captures the feeling of the album, I think. Is it a big adjustment moving from Toronto into St into Stratford for you? You know, it, not really. Um, I mean, it's obviously a very different town. It's a very different pace and all that. But I've been to, in Toronto for 30 years, and I've really felt that it was... Uh, I'd outgr outgrown it, or I felt out of place there. And, I, and um, so moving here, I just felt this cloud of stress kind of evaporate. You know, I'd never owned a house before, so that was cool. Um, I was like, I put my big boy pants on or something, you know, and, I, and, we're, and it's a lot of work. I mean, my, my wife is, is the brains of the operation, you know, I mean, she's really great in managing everything because I'm kind of scatterbrained that way. But it's just nice to have the house and this new, new, uh, it's not often you get a second, like a new, uh, a second chance or something, you know, at life, yeah. like new phase, new friends, a new town. So I was very happy about, about our, where we landed, you know, it's great. Do you ever reminisce about the old days playing gigs around St. Catharines, um, you know, with other people like Kurt Swinghammer, Michael D'Amico and, uh, and that group mm. of people? Yeah, well, I mean, I still, Kurt's still one of my best friends. I mean, it, when we lived in Toronto, I was over there probably three times a week at his house, you know. He lived about 20 minutes from me. Um, so we're still in touch, and they've come here to visit us. And uh, there's not too many people from St. Catharines that I, I see that often. Um, you know, I had a lot of high school buddies that we all kind of went our oh, separate ways, it seems. But Mike D'Amico actually took the photo uh, for my... Forever Endeavor album a couple of years ago. He took all the photos. And I hadn't seen him in years. We just happened to bump into each other on the street. Um, but I never really knew him that well anyway. But but obviously, Kurt and I, uh, I mean, Kurt's the reason I moved to Toronto. He was the one that said, you know, uh, I had to get out of St. Catharines if I wanted to try to play my own music. Because, you know, I was playing the Lions Tavern, but it was just doing cover songs. And I, I couldn't go on doing that forever. Ron, you have played the new Performing Arts Center in St. Catharines, haven't you? Oh, oh yeah, you yeah, I played there in 2015. You know, when I played it last time, it had, had that sort of new car smell, you know, the whole theater, everything was new. And and uh, so it was, it was nice to, yeah, it was just nice to be asked. Cause I don't, even before COVID, I never really played St. Catharines as much as some people. Like it maybe every three years or something, I would have a show. So I'm always happy to come back and, uh, my parents are always happy when I get to play there, you know, anywhere in St. Catharines. So, yeah, I'm just really looking forward. We only have one day to rehearse, you know, and then we got to put on the show. So it's also a bit uh, nerve wracking because it's, it's a big deal to play with this, this, you know, an orchestra like that. For sure. You know, I guess it's just me and my guitar and an orchestra. So, you know, sometimes things can go astray, you know. Ron, it's been great to catch up with you. Uh, good luck on the show on December 5th and thanks for your time today. Thanks, Mike. Nice seeing you again. You